There are thousands of Kenyans in the Gulf countries, uh, and I will tabulate the data that we have. Uh, we have in total over 400,000 Kenyans uh, in the Gulf states, and uh, I'll tabulate as follows. In Saudi Arabia, the records we have are there are 310,266 Kenyans. In Qatar, 66,025. United Arab Emirates, 23,000. Bahrain, 8,000. Oman, 5,392. Kuwait, 3,515. Iran 200, Iraq 150. The total record we have as of today is 416,548. Uh, Madam Speaker, I wish to further state as follows. Uh, Kenyans in these territories exhibit high movement between various Gulf states. The number, numbers given therefore constitute periodic statistics derived from our missions in these countries, further corroborated through official sources of the host governments. It should be noted that not all Kenyans register with our missions abroad. The second question was to do with how many Kenyans have lost their lives working in the Gulf states from 2002 to date. The records we have show that the total number of Kenyans who have lost their lives in the Gulf region is 316. The breakdown is as follows. Saudi Arabia, 166. Qatar, 58. United Arab Emirates 51, Iraq 25, Bahrain 10, Kuwait 6, Oman nil, Iran nil. The total 316. Aspect C of the question. What support does the government provide to families of Kenyans who die overseas? And could, and could I provide uh, details on uh, Mildred? Uh, Madam Speaker, upon receiving a report on the death of a Kenyan abroad, the first step that our mission do is to notify the family of the demise of their loved one. The Ministry does this by liaising with the employer, the foreign recruitment agent, if they're foreign based, and the local recruitment agent based in Kenya to establish information about the disease and next of kin. Two, the Ministry also has a robust counseling department that offers psychological support to family members including managing of the information, assessment, counselling, preparation for travel for a family representative or family member and coordination with family members to receive the body of the deceased. The Ministry also establishes the migration status of the deceased where possible, coordinates with the employer, the government agencies, diaspora groupings, other stakeholders of the family while ensuring that the body of the disease is well preserved ahead of repatriation back home. The Ministry also follows up on the benefits and entitlements of the diseased person from their place of work in accordance with the applicable laws of the host country. Fifth, the mission facilitates obtaining of a post-mortem report to establish the cause of death and provides necessary documentation facilitate the repatriation of the body back home. This includes 
issuing a no objection certification for the body to be transported to Kenya. The Ministry also facilitates administrative procedures, including police investigations, if any, and a settlement of hospital and medical bills as appropriate. The Ministry also coordinates the deceased family on the arrival or at the arrival port and they can facilitate the receiving of the body. Where the deceased is not employed or, or, or out of immigration status, the embassy liaises with the ministry to inform the family to enable them to make necessary arrangements, including sending a representative or a family member to facilitate repatriation of the body back home. Madam Speaker, there are limited resources available in terms of government support and facilitation for actual payment of bills of the deceased, as well as repatriation of mortal remains. However, in extreme cases and on a case-by-case -case basis, the Ministry has invoked such support for extremely needy cases. For, the, for instance, in the case of Albania, there was medical evacuation, uh, there was the death of an athlete in Mexico, and a student in Finland, where the ministry uh, had to bear the costs. In many other cases, the ministry works and mobilizes the diaspora through associations to raise the necessary funds to facilitate repatriation. When we conclude any uh, uh, MOUs, they shall not be hidden, they shall be made available to the relevant uh, committees of parliament. And as I said, uh, Madam Speaker, is that one of the things we are also planning to do, to bring for parliament, is a session on paper to have our members deliberate and guide appropriately on Kenya's foreign policy, foreign and diaspora policy. Because all along this has been confined to the executive, documents are confined to the executive. We want, for the past time, a comprehensive discussion on Kenya's foreign policy and some of these issues, I'm sure, uh, will, be will benefit that document will benefit immensely or will be enriched immensely from the wisdom of, of, of Parliament. The second thing that uh, I want to emphasize is that these recruitments have been largely private sector driven. Uh, they have not been government driven. But the government will not entertain an ethnic driven uh, arrangement when getting uh, uh, people opportunities outside the country. Uh, Madam Speaker, some issues are historical uh, and we all know them. Uh, for instance, if, if, if and, and my brother, the senator, is very vast in this, he knows that if you went to, to Minnesota uh, today in the United States, because of historical purposes, we are likely to find a certain inclination of Kenyans because there are those who broke the ground uh, in, that, in that area. And they tend to then invite more and more to come. If, 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 uh, if you went to uh, LA and uh, uh, Atlanta, you would also find uh, a, similar, a similar pattern. So there are some aspects that were there because the pioneering uh, Kenyans went there earlier, laid ground for a number of other Kenyans to join them. So it is not a deliberate policy of government to pursue that. But uh, I, wish, I wish to state that uh, indeed um, uh, these 19 agreements are work in progress and they are very serious because uh, they are bilateral. So you are ending up negotiating with different different countries, but we have some, uh, for instance Germany, we are likely to be able to conclude uh, by September 
And indeed, uh, not too long ago, the German parliament uh, has now passed uh, a bill uh, basically affirming this policy where they will be able to take uh, many uh, migrants uh, and Kenya was trying to secure a slot to have close to uh, 200,000 slots in different areas to be able to go and work in, in Germany. And I wish to state that we are not, these negotiations are not just about uh, uh, what we call laborers. Uh, we, are, we have a skills policy that is being worked on uh, so that we can have even doctors, we can have uh, other technicians, uh, teachers and other people uh, who are qualified and skilled in different areas to be able to also uh, benefit from this this uh, arrangement. In the case of uh, the United Arab Emirates, for instance, uh, we have uh, more or less concluded uh, a SEPA, this is a comprehensive economic partnership uh, agreement. Uh, and part of the issues that uh, we are looking to are also now embedded in, uh, in, in, in that agreement. So there is progress, but I would like to uh, uh, assure the members that it is each country has its own issues and we try to navigate on a bilateral basis uh, with those individual countries. And, uh, but we are making good progress and we will try to accelerate where uh, possible. Also on uh, the websites of the Depart uh, State Department for Diaspora, uh, we are able to indicate the licensed recruitment agencies because in the past uh, we have had cases where the Senate is right that unscrupulous people have taken advantage uh, and landed our Kenyan people in very difficult uh, situations. So we are trying to streamline this and in between, uh, let me also just uh, notify the Senate that uh, we are also improving on our negotiation on what you call uh, the labor or employment uh, uh, agreements with various countries and we are making them much better, much more uh, refined so that the safeguards can be provided for our Kenyans. And the uh, classic example now is in Germany, uh, where we are just about to conclude uh, an agreement uh, of, uh, uh, of a labor framework or employment framework, and we are refining with those that uh, uh, relate to the Gulf and other states. All the agencies that are registered are available on the NEA uh, website, that is the National Development Agency website. And this information is also shared with the NGAO. This is uh, how we cascade it through the, 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 the county commissioners all the way, so that this information is available at the district and county offices uh, as well. But one thing that remains is that uh, through this National Employment Agency, we, there are regulations and we are trying to weed out all the entities that uh, do not fit the bill, that are not fit for, pur for purpose. So this is an ongoing process and uh, we are also ready to receive any further uh, ideas on how we can tighten uh, the news around the bad elements uh, from, from this house and other Kenyans. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 19 MOUs are being negotiated uh, as, as we speak. Uh, we are quite advanced with Qatar, United Arab Emirates, uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, we have uh, a few rescue centers. We have a rescue center in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and the other one, uh, Madam Speaker, is that we are looking for resources. Uh, and uh, this is a conversation we have had with uh, the budget committees to be, uh, of, of uh, Parliament to be able.
to obtain resources so that we can uh, put up more rescue uh, centers. That is one of the biggest challenges that we face. But once we have sufficient resources, we shall roll out a few rescue centers. Has actually eliminated 700, so far, 700 rogue agencies uh, from the register who are associated with not handling uh, the labor issues professionally. Uh, the other thing that I would say is that when uh, these uh, Kenyans get challenges, the embassy has always been available to provide emergency travel documents to assist them so that they can travel back to, to Kenya and move away from uh, uh, the, the, the hostile environment. And we continue to do so. And in fact, the Saudi Arabia uh, Centre is perhaps the most active in issuing emergency travel documents or certificates uh, for, for, for Kenyans in case their passports and documents have been held. Uh, the final point I would just like to say on this one is that uh, uh, the unfortunate side is that sometimes it's the, 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 the fewer cases, bad cases, that tend to cloud the, 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 the actual picture. But in reality, 90% uh, of the uh, of the workers, particularly the ladies, when they come to Kenya for a short break, they go back to the same venue. So the mistreatment, and we are not downplaying it, but we are trying to rein in so that that mistreatment can come to an end. And these are the areas that we want to refine as we negotiate our bilateral agreements. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, we are aware of uh, the case of Stephen Bertrand Munyako, uh, who was uh, uh, incarcerated for on a on a case of uh, manslaughter uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 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 Riyadh, and uh, I wish to say that. A few weeks ago, uh, I did write officially to the Foreign Minister of, uh, uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, intervening that this individual should not be uh, executed. Um, that execution was deferred, uh, it did not take place. I also had the opportunity to meet the family of uh, the mother of Stephen Bertrand Munyako and we had a conversation and the challenge that is there is that uh, um, there is a proposal that is being mooted by the family of the person who died that they be compensated with you know, 150 million, equivalent of 150 million Kenyan shillings. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the family has raised uh, about 10 million shillings and they continue to try and raise uh, uh, more money because this is what they call the blood money, some financial settlement for, 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 for that. Um, and clearly, uh, it would be remiss of me not to notify uh, the nation and parliament is that there is no budgetary provision for the government uh, to settle uh, this kind of situation, uh, whether it's Saudi or any other, other country. But the ministry and the government is doing what it can uh, to see if this matter can be resolved uh, differently and perhaps if the family that lost their uh, individual can perhaps climb down from the high level of 150 million Kenyan students uh, so that this case can be resolved. So it, it is work in progress, it's a conversation that is ongoing.